So now we're going to look at alternate interior angles. Again, we have parallel lines, line M and line L, that are parallel to each other, and we know that they're parallel because they are marked as that they are parallel. We also take a look at the transversal. And the transversal cuts the parallel lines, which makes eight different angles. So I have those angles labeled here. But I also realize that we're looking at alter, alternate interior angles. So where is the interior? The interior is between the parallel ling, angles or parallel lines, and the exterior is outside of the parallel lines. So if that's not helpful enough to write exterior on the outside, what I'm going to go ahead and do is cover up the exterior area. So we have the word exterior away and we also have the angle seven and eight taken away. And then I'm also going to use my ruler to cover up the other exterior and angles one and two. So now I'm left with only angle three and angle four and angle five and angle six. So let's take a look at angle three. So angle three, looking at the alternate we're not talking about angle four, we're talking actually about angle six. So three and six are alternate, ex alternate interior angles. So angle three is congruent to angle six. We also know that angle five and angle four are also alternate interior angles. So angle four is congruent to angle five. And this was angle six. So what does that mean? That means that if they're congruent, their shape is the same. But if their shape is the same, we also know that they have the same measure. So we can also write that the measure of angle three is equal to the measure of angle six, and that the measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle five. So let's uncover the exteriors and realize that we are looking at alternate interior angles with four and five that are congruent and three and six that are congruent.